We're here outside the groundbreaking of a new facility being championed by the Crossroads people over here on the west side of Providence. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous facility, real apartments, real dignity. Looking forward to its ongoing progress. Congressman Magaziner, a former member of the Board of Directors of Crossroads, is here today for the groundbreaking. I couldn't let you get away without asking you about the chaos, if you will, on Capitol Hill. Is, is there a... First of all, I got to ask: Is there a representative that you're behind? Do you, do you anticipate Democrats uh, nominating their own speaker? And, and give us a little feedback of what you can. Well, it's a very serious and solemn moment. It's the first time in our nation's history that a Speaker of the House uh, has been removed from office. Um, I'm going to be supporting Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader, when I get back to Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the character, the intellect, the experience uh, to lead the chamber, and he seems to be starting off with the most support of any of the candidates. Uh, he has a uh, op-ed that he came out with in the Washington Post today that I would encourage everyone to read, where he calls for a unity government. Uh, this could be a, a rare opportunity for Democrats and Republicans to come together in a power-sharing agreement that would allow bills with broad bipartisan support to come to the floor, as opposed to what we've had over the last several months, where a small group of extremists uh, were calling the shots. So that's my hope. That's how I intend to vote. Um, it's obviously a very fluid situation, so we will see what happens. Is there a possibility Republicans can cross the aisle, particularly given the bipartisan dissent of Mr. McCarthy? I hope so. Um, again, we'll see. Uh, you know, there we, we have divided government right now. Mm -hmm. Democrats control the Senate and the White House. Republicans have a slim majority in the House. And so the only way anything is going to get done is for the two parties to come together and cooperate. Uh, you know, under the last speaker, uh, Republicans in the House seemed to think that they could take a my way or the highway approach. Uh, but obviously that doesn't work in this context where you have divided government. So I think there is an opportunity now for uh, the two parties to come together in coalition uh, to govern. Uh, this is something that happens frequently in other countries around the world. Um, but it's going to require at least a handful of reasonable Republicans uh, to put partisanship aside for the good of the country. Final, final question. You know, traditionally, committee chairmanships have been, if you will, the, tr the prize for having a majority in either the House or the Senate. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of money, power, prestige, uh, as well as, quite frankly, a, a sense of important direction that will come from that chairmanship. Is that something that's easily divisible in a unity government? Absolutely. So that's one possibility, um, you know, as part of a potential deal. Uh, but, you know, I think another one that would be just as important is a mechanism for bills that have broad bipartisan support to come to the floor. There are a lot of bills that have 200, 300, sometimes even more co-sponsors, strong bipartisan support, but they don't get to the floor because a small number of extreme members object. Uh, a mechanism to allow bills with broad bipartisan support to get a vote, uh, I think, would be a very positive uh, outcome of any sort of a power-sharing agreement if we can get one. Congressman, as always, thank you very much. Good luck in Washington. Thank you, Pat.